What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. And I'm Jake Bruton. And on the Build Show today, we are gonna talk about blower doors. That's right, this big red door with a fan on it. What is it, how does it work, and why should you care? Let's get going. All right guys, if you don't know Jake Bruton, Jake's a builder friend of mine from Columbia, Missouri. We're at my house and we've got a blower door that's set up in the front door area. The rest of the house is all closed down. All the windows and doors are closed. And we open the front door and put this fabric frame in. And then there's this big fan that has some electronics uh, built into it. So first off, the what? Jake, can you explain what the yeah. blower door does? So basically this is a testing device that we're able to measure air leakage in the house. Okay. So the, the unit comes with a, a expandable door and this fabric frame. It comes with a powerful fan that has a manometer that attaches to it. And so we can measure airflow across this device. The RetroTech unit, you can pull plugs out to get more airflow. You can put them back in to get less. It's a really versatile piece of equipment. All you really need is a door opening and power to be able to test your, your building. And what actually is it testing? What is it telling us about the building? Yeah, so it basically is measuring cubic feet per minute of air moving or leaking in and out of the building so that we can get an ACH number. Okay. And that ACH number comes from uh, the code. So the IRC code since 2012 has had a standard for testing air leakage in homes. And uh, I believe maybe 2015 was the first year that the, the blower door test was mandatory or the word mandatory was added but they use 50 pascals of pressure as our test pressure, and then we're measuring how many times all of the air inside the house would exchange with exterior air or outdoor air at that fan pressure. So the code gives us, if we're in climate zone one and two, which is where Austin is. Austin, Texas, climate zone Texas, two. Yep. Uh, climate zone two, uh, we are five ACH50, which means five air exchanges per hour or less. But you were telling me the city of Austin adopted three. a three. Three is what climate zones three and up are rated at in the code as well. So in my market, that's climate zone four, we have to qualify a house for three air exchanges per hour at 50 pascals of pressure or less. So in other words, when we pressurize the house, when Jake's talking about these air exchanges per hour, that's at pressure when this fan is going and is pumping the house up. I like to use the balloon analogy. If we <laughs> we're puffing on the balloon and we're blowing it up, we're checking to see how many pin pricks are in that balloon because the leakier the envelope, the harder it is yep. gonna be to heat and cool that house. It's also gonna make the house uncomfortable potentially. And each one of those pin pricks is a place that bugs can get in. And also with that we might have mold growth in the house because air with humidity might be leaking in. So we're trying to build a very airtight house. Now, how does the fan in this process actually work, Jake? So we have two different test methods that we can use. We can pressurize or depressurize the house. When we test our houses, uh, not for the certification, but when we test just to understand how the house is operating, we do both because okay. your windows and doors will puff differently against weather stripping. Yep. Uh, but basically it just forces that 50 pascals of pressure into the house and then it measures what it's what is escaping or what it's able to draw. And so right now we're set up to depressurize. We're gonna push air out and that'll cause air to pull in. It also would cause any of our exterior doors if they're traditional in swings to pull close or pull away from their uh, weather, weather stripping. stripping. Right. Uh, and then the same sorts of things happen with windows as well. That's why we do both directions. Uh, we're also able to just use this to find leaks without the manometer. So. Uh, I think you and I are going to turn the thing on and just walk around and see if we can't find any air movement. I love uh, it. Sometimes we'll pressurize and then lick the back of your hand and put it around a window because this <laughs> is like the most sensitive part of your skin. And if you lick it, you can you can hear feel you that. can feel it a little bit better. Uh, we also can just crank this thing all the way up and listen. If the job site's really really quiet, we can also just hear a little around windows on oh, corners yeah, and things like that. You can find them just by listening sometimes. Stay tuned for our next video. We're actually gonna crank this up and get the number for my house. But before we do that, I wanna bring on our mutual friend, Steve Basic, to talk about why you might wanna do this. All right, Steve, now the most important question, I think, which is the why. Why would a builder or a homeowner want their house blowered or tested? Why? Well, 
as Jake expressed, it's a diagnostic tool. So any diagnostic tool is to gain knowledge, right? Yeah. So as you can imagine, I had a lot of conversations with builders across the country. And one of the things I always get is, oh my God, dude, you, you're never going to believe it. I build the best house in America. My houses are so tight. I'm building near <laughs> passive. And then I say, well, what's your blower door number? Like how tight? Well, what's a blower door? <laughs> so it's like, how do you know what you're doing unless you're actually testing it yeah. and diagnosing the, the house, right? Yeah. And you can use it in retrofits because you want to know how bad something is to understand how much you're going to improve it. But from a new construction standpoint, obviously it's code in most places now, but you really want to be able to gauge how well you're doing. And as a builder, you know, it's become one of these kind of things where, as a side note, build builders, architects, people like to brag about what their numbers are, right? And how tight my house was compared to yours. Yep. When the reality is that if you're if you're gauging those numbers, I use a scale of say, you know, anything below one is a superb job. Really Obviously job. under 0.6, which is a passive house, um, what you call it, measurement is exceptionally good. But one to 1.5, certainly not bad. Over 1.5 to, you know, the the code three or five, we can still do a lot better. There's a lot more improvement. There's a lot had. more improvement. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there doing phenomenal stuff. I've done a, a series of houses with some good numbers and, and a lot of it really isn't that big of a challenge anymore, yeah. you know, to get under one. So if you're watching this and you hadn't done a blower door score before, or hadn't done this on your house, what I'm hearing Steve say is shoot for a 1.5 or a one. That's a really tight house. It means you've got good control over your air layer on the outside of the house. You're not gonna have things leaking in when the air blows. And so then at that point, when you think about fresh air, we need to think about insulation, all those things are important, but first start with that tight envelope. And if you're a builder watching this, you should absolutely start doing all of your houses so that you have some metric to understand what I did on this house was different and here's how it led to this blower door score. Would you agree with all that? Yeah, stuff? And, and one of the things, that, the interesting things that you brought up is when you said as a builder, right? When, when I first got into this, the, the whole building science thing 30 years ago, the only people that were really using blower doors were people that were, their, their profession was consulting or doing diagnostics, mm -hmm. right? But as a builder like yourself or like Jake, it's like, how do I know that the hard work that we're putting in up front towards air sealing is really working, right. right? We need to verify that and gain the knowledge. But like you guys said earlier, you could crank this thing up and walk around the house and get one hell of an education, yep. right? People are always asking, well, hey, where do you get this information from? How do you do this? Well, I probably have a, a couple hundred times of firing up a blower door and just walking around with your hand and holding it up to outlets, you know, wall sconces, et cetera, and finding all the different holes. But gaining that knowledge, you can then regurgitate into that future project and make it that much better. That's totally my story, Steve. That's what I've done over the years, the last 10 years plus. Uh, I have my blower door scores. I know what I did on those houses. I change my methods on the next house to get better. And here we are at my house. We're about to fire this up. Guys, stay tuned for the next video. Steve and Jake and I are going to fire this up, see what my actual blower door score is. I'm frankly a little, a little nervous right now. I'm not nervous. But if you aren't, I'm not nervous. Steve's not nervous. That's because he's not about to live here, <laughs> and he didn't spend the last six months tightening it. Right. But, but under, understand though, and, and again, it's because the, the the people watching this, like everybody, gets nervous about these numbers. You don't. You would never experience the difference between 0.8 and 1.4. That's right. That's right? right. Sitting on a couch or that, unless all of that cumulative air leakage was in one, one hole spot. behind your neck, yeah. which it probably isn't. When you get down down below 2.0, you're searching for thousands of pinholes. That's right. You're, you're not Smaller. looking for that one big hole anymore. Yeah, that's right. It's all those small things that add up to a big number. Guys, hopefully you learned something on blower doors. If you're not familiar with Steve or Jake, I'm going to put a link to their Instagram uh, feeds below so you can follow them on their daily job sites and, and uh, especially Steve from the Architects Board as well. But they're also filming on buildshownetwork.com. And if you're not subscribing to our weekly email, I send an email out every single Friday with a link to all the new content on Build Show Network. And Steve and Jake every week from their job sites or from Boston where Steve is or his jobs, they're filming 
videos about building science and how to build a better house. I'll put a link in the description. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on The Build Show.